borescope inspection technologies are no longer a new concept for sterile processing professionals around the United States. However, there are still many departments that have yet to make an investment in this quality assurance tool. Or if they have, they struggle to understand the full range of applications available to them with these devices. This presentation will take a deep dive into the what, why, and how of borescope use in sterile processing and highlight the critical quality impact they can have on your surgical instrument quality. During today's presentation, as we take a look at flexible borescopes used in sterile processing, we will discuss the background and purpose of borescope usage in sterile processing, outline current industry recommendations for borescope use, looking both at the professional organizations as well as regulatory agencies. Share some examples of quality issues from the field that have been identified by using borescope cameras. And provide best practices and considerations for creating a high-performing borescope inspection program in your department. A borescope is a visualization tool used for viewing areas of a device that otherwise would not be visible. Because of its long, slender design, it is primarily used for viewing internal channels and components. The borescope is inserted into the item being evaluated so that it can be seen without damaging the item. Prior to the introduction of borescopes in sterile processing, the only way to view an internal channel was to cut open the channel for direct visualization, destroying the item. Hospitals have cut open Andrew's suction tips to confirm that their reusable suction tips were clean, only to find retained debris and staining inside them. Borescopes come in many shapes and types. They can either have a rigid shaft that is inserted into the item for viewing, or more commonly, it can be flexible to view channels that are not straight. The borescopes used in sterile processing are most commonly flexible borescopes. The internal components of a flexible borescope can either be made of traditional fiber optic image bundles or the more modern CCD camera. Fiber optic video bundles are strands of delicate glass that carry the video image from the tip of the scope up to the eyepiece. The advantages of fiber optic scopes is that they can be used in very small diameters and they tend to be lower cost. If the borescope is a video scope with a camera, the tip of the scope will have a video chip that sends a digital image to a monitor for viewing. The video scope has the capacity for higher resolution images and is usually more durable. Borescopes are used in all sorts of industrial settings, including examining aircraft engines and steam turbines. But our focus today will be on the use of borescopes in sterile processing. Even within the uses in sterile processing, there are a variety of sizes of borescopes available. Smaller diameter scopes can fit in very small channels of flexible endoscopes, like ureteroscopes. And larger diameter scopes can be used to check things like arthroscopic shavers and suction tips. In 2012, NBC News partnered up with the Center of Public Integrity to take a look into dirty surgical instruments in the OR. The primary focus of the interview was a man named John Harrison, who had shoulder repair surgery at Methodist Hospital in 2009. Weeks after the surgery, his shoulder became infected, causing significant damage and pain, and requiring follow-up surgeries to combat the infection and repair the surgical site. John's surgery, which should have taken only weeks of recovery, caused him pain and limited mobility for years. Upon investigation, the cause of the surgery was determined to be the suction channel of an arthroscopic shaver that had been used in the procedure. Upon inspection of the facility's shavers with a borescope, the shavers were found to have bone and tissue in the internal channels. In 2011, Jahan Azizi, a risk management clinical engineer at the University of Michigan Health System, examined 350 surgery-ready suction tips that had been cleaned according to the manufacturer's instructions. Upon inspection with a borescope, all 350 suction tips contained blood, bone, tissue, or rust. After taking those 350 suction tips back through the cleaning process according to the manufacturer's IFU, 
all but seven still contain debris. The emergence of stories like these has been moving the surgical industry toward the use of borescopes. They illustrate for us how important visual inspection is and that even cleaning a device according to the IFU will not necessarily guarantee a clean device. So why should your sterile department use a borescope? The answer goes back to who we are as sterile processing professionals. Your team is the one that is entrusted with providing safe, sterile, functional tools to the operating room for them to provide life-saving and life-restoring care. SPD Tech stand between the threat of blood-borne pathogens and the vulnerable patient. SPD Techs bear the weighty burden of ensuring the device is cleaned appropriately and being the last person to see that device before it is packaged and sterilized again. The departments who choose to implement borescope visualization are saying they are not content with assuming instruments are clean, but are committed to verifying its cleanliness for the patient. The biggest reason these devices are needed in SPD is because visual inspection is a key tenet of what this industry is about. As we saw in the University of Michigan study, not all devices will come clean, even if they are cleaned according to the manufacturer's IFU. Without a way of visualizing those difficult to clean instruments, a department has no way of knowing if they are putting patients at risk. Devices are also becoming more complex, with the advancements being made in robotic surgery and minimally invasive surgery. With the trend moving toward minimally invasive surgery, we are only going to find more and more instruments with small lumens and channels. These instruments are a high risk for retained soil, and so the need for borescope usage in SPD is only going to grow. You're probably aware that borescopes aren't the only solution out there for checking the cleanliness of lumens and cannulas. How does your facility check them? A lot of facilities use cotton pipe cleaners. Others use nylon lumen brushes. The challenge with both of these tools is that they can have the possibility of leaving debris behind in the lumen. There are low linting pipe cleaners available for sterile processing departments to use, but no product is perfectly lint-free. In many technicians' experience, even the best quality pipe cleaners will leave behind some amount of fuzz or lint. Other departments use nylon bristle brushes to check the cleanliness of a lumen. This is problematic in a couple of ways. Just like the pipe cleaners, the brushes have a chance of leaving debris behind. Rather than fuzz or lint, it is possible for brush fibers to detach from the brush and stay in the cannula. Also, having cleaning brushes on the clean assembly side of the department encourages technicians to perform device cleaning, which should only be done in the decontamination area. In general, sterile processing departments should not have any cleaning brushes on the clean assembly side of the department. Other departments use water or alcohol to flush through lumens at the assembly stations to confirm cleanliness of lumens. These solutions will not necessarily reveal stuck-on debris, rust, or staining in the instrument. Blowing out the instrument with compressed air will also not detect any of the stuck-on debris or staining, and it may even aerate and blow around any contamination that was in the suction. All of these methods attempt to check the internal channels of instruments, but they cannot accomplish what a quick check with a borescope can. One final reason to use borescopes instead of other conventional methods for checking lumens is that brushes, pipe cleaners, and water cannot detect a damaged instrument. They can't tell you if there are deep scratches or gouges inside the cannula that may be harboring biofilm and debris. They can't tell you that the instrument channel on your flexible cystoscope is kinked and will fail in surgery. A borescope needs to be used to visually inspect the integrity of the instrument. This is particularly significant for the processing of large diameter endoscopes, ERCP scopes, endoscopic retrograde cholangiopancreatography are commonly used to place stents into the bile or pancreatic ducts to bypass strictures or blockages. Adverse events have been reported to the FDA where a stent was left stuck inside an ERCP scope during reprocessing, inhibiting brushing, cleaning, and disinfection. 
Failing to identify that blockage could put the patient at risk for infection. Other blockages, like instrument channel kinks or bending section damage, can inhibit the safe passage and deployment of a stent or use of an instrument and could harm the patient. All professional organizations related to instrument reprocessing have recognized the importance and value of using a borescope to visualize the internal channel of instruments and have recommended its use. One such organization is AAMI, the Association for the Advancement of Medical Instrumentation. In the AAMI ST79 document, visual inspection is listed as a verification of the cleaning process. After cleaning, technicians are to inspect the instruments for any residual soils. It then says, inspection using enhanced visualization tools, such as lighted magnification and video borescopes, might identify residues not observable by the unaided eye. In addition to using these visualization tools, it goes on to recommend other cleaning verification processes for soils that cannot be detected by visualization. Borescopes are also specifically recommended in their ST91 document, which is targeted specifically at best practices for the reprocessing of flexible endoscopes. SNGA, the Society of Gastroenterology Nurses and Associates, is a professional organization of nurses and associates dedicated to the safe and effective practice of gastroenterology and endoscopy nursing. When discussing endoscope reprocessing, they also emphasize the importance of visual inspection of the endoscope and add, the use of a borescope to inspect internal endoscope channels has been suggested. Other professional organizations also recommend the use of a borescope. The IAH CSMMCER textbook instructs reprocessors to check the cleanliness of the lumens after cleaning, which can be accomplished using a borescope. AORN, the OR's guiding standards, recommend the use of a borescope on arthroscopic shavers. APIC, Infection Prevention's guiding standards, recommend the use of a borescope for checking internal lumens. These professional organizations all are recommending best practices for instrument reprocessing, and they unanimously say that visualizing the internal channels of instruments and scopes is a must. It is not just the professional organizations that have recommended the use of borescopes, but regulatory bodies have listed borescopes as an important tool in instrument reprocessing. In a safety communication by the FDA, they made the following recommendation for shaver reprocessing. Consider inspecting the inside of the devices following cleaning to ensure that they have been cleared of any tissue or fluids. There may be multiple ways to accomplish this. As one example, the facility that brought this situation to our attention uses a 3 mm video scope to inspect the channels of the shaver handpiece. In the CDC's Essential Elements of a Reprocessing Program for Flexible Endoscopes, they specifically detail a visual inspection step after cleaning. After manual cleaning, visually inspect the endoscope and its accessories. Visual inspection provides additional assurance that the endoscope and its accessories are clean and free of defects. Complex devices such as flexible endoscopes may require the use of lighted magnification or additional methods to assist with the inspection process. Finally, there are a growing number of instrument manufacturers that are now including borescopes in their IFUs as a critical step in instrument reprocessing. If your department says to surveyors that you follow manufacturers' instructions for reprocessing instruments and devices, you will need to be visually checking the internal channels of arthroscopes. Take a look at these two IFU statements from arthroscopic shavers. This first one from Stryker is the same arthroscopic shaver that was found to be dirty in the NBC News story about John Harrison and the shoulder infection. In months following that investigation, Stryker revised their IFU to include a section on visual inspection of the shaver channels. It says, visually inspect the handpiece, including all internal surfaces for remaining soil. Use an endoscopic camera and endoscope, if necessary, to see the inner surface of the lumen. If soil remains, repeat the manual cleaning procedure, focusing on those areas. As you can see, 
There are similar recommendations from other manufacturers of arthroscopic shavers as well. Here's one from Arthrex. If you go into a facility that does not have or use a borescope to check their arthroscopic shavers, you're very likely to find them contaminated. These photos are of instruments that have been cleaned in sterile processing departments and were either sterilized in this condition or were being prepared to be sterilized. As you can see, tissue, bone chips, bone cement, blood, and other debris can hide inside a lumen device. Instruments that have internal welds or internal channel transitions from a larger lumen to a smaller one tend to collect debris in those locations. It is difficult for a brush to reach into those areas. Pictured here on the left is a significant bone chip found in a cannula. On the right is some tissue in an arthroscopic shaver suction channel. Debris like this and other foreign bodies presents a serious microbial risk to the patient. Here are some examples of dried blood inside arthroscopic shaver channels. Notice that the picture on the right is showing some corrosion under the dried blood as it has deteriorated the finish of the channel. When organic material is left to dry on an instrument, it invites the formation of biofilms and becomes increasingly difficult to get the device clean again. For both of these devices, the blood has remained on the instrument so long that damage has been done to the channel and cannot be cleaned. Corrosion and rust are also common to find in instruments that have not been well maintained. As rust and corrosion break down the surface of the instrument, they create pits and crevices that will more easily trap debris. And the rust is a foreign body in the instrument that could potentially end up in the surgical site. Rust tends to spread inside instruments, so it is important to catch and address this problem early. The picture on the left shows a brush bristle that was found inside a clean arthroscopic shaver. This picture is a great example of an instrument that would flush clear and show no signs of contamination, but there is a hidden risk inside. A small foreign body like this, if introduced into the surgical site, could cause serious infection and adhesion and tissue damage. Only visual inspection is going to reveal that the brush bristle has been left behind in the channel. This is a more common occurrence than you may expect. And in fact, one of the arthroscopic shavers inspected from the 2012 NBC News segment contained a brush bristle like this one. The picture on the right is of a flexible endoscope that has been cleaned and disinfected, ready for patient care. As you can see, there is a hair or fiber of some kind in the channel. Instruments are passed through this channel, so debris in the channel can and will contaminate the instrument, as well as potentially be deposited into the patient. Finally, here are some pictures of endoscope channel damage. Notice the bulge on the instrument channel to the left. While that may not significantly impact the insertion of an instrument through the scope, it reveals a weak point in the instrument channel and is an early indication of breakage. To prevent the scope from failing mid-procedure, it needs to be removed from service and properly repaired. The image on the right shows a significant dent or kink that would likely cause difficulty in passing an instrument or brush through the channel. Now that your stomach is officially turned from looking at bio-burden pictures, we can start talking through some solutions. I'll tell you though, putting a borescope in the sterile processing department is no guarantee that instruments are going to end up in the OR cleaner. Department leaders across the nation have purchased borescopes in hopes of elevating instrument quality in their departments, only to find that it collects dust in the corner as staff ignore its presence. If you're going to make a difference in your surgical instrument quality program with a borescope, you need to have a carefully implemented plan. Leaving inspection up to the preferences and hunches of your SPD techs is going to create wide inconsistencies from one tech to another, some spending far too much time going over every detail, with others ignoring the tool altogether. In the next few slides, we will outline some general steps to creating a borescope inspection program that will help make an impact on your surgical instrument quality and equip the SPD technicians at your facility to do their job effectively. 
As with every piece of equipment in your department, you need to be sure that your technicians are given training on how to properly use the borescope. And it can't be a competency that gets filled out one time, left in a drawer, and is never seen again. As a key component of surgical instrument auditing, it needs to become part of the department competency that is done for new hires during onboarding, and it needs to be reviewed at least annually. The last thing you want is to have a surveyor ask your teammates, or you, about the borescope in your department, and the honest answer to be, yeah, nobody really knows how to use that. A helpful way to train technicians initially on the device will be to use a presentation like this one, to help them understand the gravity of visually inspecting internal channels and to formally give them the freedom to be able to inspect the instruments they are cleaning or assembling. When the borescope competency is revisited at least annually, it is a good opportunity to instruct technicians on the use and function of the instruments they are inspecting, why those instruments are at risk of being contaminated, and what adverse surgical outcomes can, and have, occurred due to findings like debris and brush bristles. That continuing education is a key sustaining piece to keep the borescope out of the shadows and in front of your team. If you have looked through a channel with a borescope, you already know that it is a pretty cool but disorienting experience. As the view tunnels through this dark space with the walls of the cannula zipping past, it can be difficult to know what exactly it is you are looking for. You can help refine the skills of your borescope operators by taking the time to show examples of debris, staining, damage, blood, rust, corrosion, metal shavings and defects, and others to them. The point of doing this is to help calibrate your team. If you don't give them any baseline of what is acceptable and what is an issue, you will have varying degrees of scrutiny on your team and confusion, and maybe arguments will come of it. This training could come during the initial training and annual competency, but a helpful resource would be to put those example pictures in a binder or in a digital file that is accessible to the team. Have the pictures arranged by instruments, arthroscopic shaver, suction tip, flexible bronchoscope, etc. An often overlooked aspect of the borescope inspection program at facilities is the cleaning and disinfection of the scope. The borescope is going to be inserted into channels of instruments that are supposed to be clean, looking for bio burden, residues, and the like. But what happens if the scope finds some bone chips in an arthroscopic shaver channel? The department will certainly send the shaver back to decontamination to be re-cleaned, but what happens to the borescope? If the scope is not appropriately cleaned and disinfected before use on another instrument, it can become a means of cross-contamination, carrying microorganisms from the contaminated device to other clean devices. Each borescope manufacturer has instructions for how the device is to be cared for, so make sure the cleaning and disinfection process you select matches the manufacturer's instructions for use for the borescope. Cleaning and disinfection instructions are also something you should consider when selecting a borescope. You will want to make sure the one you are considering purchasing is durable and easy to maintain. Many borescopes intended for use in sterile processing can be submersed in water, making them suitable for workflows and decontamination and on the clean side. The focus of the presentation thus far has been on cleaning verification performed on the clean assembly side of the sterile processing department. But it can also be useful to have a borescope available in the cleaning or decontamination area for technicians to be able to verify their own cleaning process. As you plan out where the borescope will be placed in your department, pick a location and step of the process that will fit neatly into your workflow. If possible, you will want to avoid placing the borescope far away from the assembly area or cleaning area, requiring technicians to walk to go use the scope before returning to their workstation. In the endoscope cleaning area, the borescope should be positioned between the manual rinse step and the disinfection step, or AERs. This way, the scope reprocessor can visually examine the scope after cleaning before initiating the disinfection step. For instruments, you will want the inspection scope at or near the instrument assembly stations and at or near the instrument cleaning sinks. 
How frequently lumened instruments should be inspected with a flexible bore scope will be up to the individual facility. One approach would be to require visual inspection of every lumened instrument. This would certainly satisfy the recommendations of standards, visually inspecting the channels to verify cleaning. Not all departments are ready to make the switch to adding that inspection step to every lumened instrument, as it would include every Fraser suction tip, every cystoscope sheath, every flexible reamer, etc. Another approach is to define inspection requirements based upon a risk assessment. Departments consider factors such as the complexity of the device and how difficult it is to get the device clean. The difficult to clean devices would be inspected at each use, while the other lumens could be put on a schedule of random sample spot audits. Examples of devices that would need to be checked every time include arthroscopic shavers. It is in their IFU that it is necessary at every cleaning and they are likely to contain residual soil. Flexible endoscopes like ureteroscopes, bronchoscopes, colonoscopes, ERCP scopes, etc. Recommendations from SGNA, AAMI, CDC, and others indicate that flexible scope channels should be visually confirmed to be clean before disinfection or sterilization. Duodenoscopes in particular need to have careful attention given to the elevator, lenses, and channels as the distal end of the scope has proven particularly difficult to get clean, even after following IFU steps exactly. Andrew Suctions Many of this style of suction have nonlinear cannulas inside, and the weld between the two cannulas tends to trap bioburden. Other styles have the handle open, which traps bioburden and is impossible to clean. One of the advantages of having a video borescope is the ability to take pictures and video. The photos you saw in today's presentation are some good examples of pictures you can take with a borescope. This is helpful because you can document the condition of an instrument upon its arrival to your department. You can inspect and document instruments as they arrive new in the facility, looking for manufacturing defects that may create cleaning challenges in the device. Instruments that have been repaired can be more thoroughly evaluated before being returned to service. But the category that would need the most attention are loaned instruments. If you send a scope out for repair and the company offers to send you in a loaner unit until yours is returned, that loaner needs to be inspected upon arrival. It has likely been used in dozens of different facilities and it has been cleaned by dozens of departments with different standards of decontamination quality. If the scope company does not have someone in-house ensuring the device was cleaned properly, you are at risk of putting a scope into service that has potentially been improperly cleaned and sterilized multiple times. Having a borescope on hand to inspect that scope before admitting it into your inventory is a great tool to ensure you know the condition of all the instruments in your department. Any defects can be easily documented and sent back to the manufacturer or supplier. Finally, when considering any quality management system, documentation is an important step in ensuring the consistency of the practice. If your department has identified key instruments that need to be visually inspected at each processing, one way of proving that inspection takes place is by documenting it at each processing. Some instrument tracking systems may even be able to collect this inspection documentation for you to make it as seamless as possible. For instruments that the facility decides only need intermittent inspection, those time intervals should be clearly identified and the results of the quality check should be documented. The reason for this documentation is to help ensure there are not holes in the process, where only eight out of 10 technicians are following the procedure of borescope inspection. Because it is such a critical step in ensuring safe instrumentation for patients, it is necessary to verify that the process is happening exactly according to department-established procedures. When demonstrating your department's quality management program to surveyors and visitors, the documentation is the only way of demonstrating the work is really being done. As the saying goes, if it's not documented, it didn't happen. In some sense, I'm sure we're preaching to the choir as the saying goes, 
in showing SPD professionals the importance of using visualization tools in processing instruments and scopes. So if you're on board with implementing a borescope inspection program, but don't know how to get one, here are some tips for making a compelling case for getting the approval for one of these devices. A good place to start would be to involve some departments that you know are going to be allies. The quantifiable value that a borescope will bring to your department is the reduction in risk of infection for your patients and a decrease in the likelihood that you will be cited for failure to follow device IFUs. Start by having conversations with your infection prevention department about surgical site infection and go over this kind of material with them. They will be a big ally for advocating for safe instruments for patients in the OR. Also, you will want to talk with whoever is in charge of accreditation at your facility. They will want to know that you have all the tools necessary to be able to comply with manufacturer's instructions for cleaning arthroscopic shavers. If possible, try to get an analysis done of your current instruments and devices. This might mean a vendor would bring in a scope to evaluate some arthroscopic shavers, suctions, and scopes. Or perhaps you could secure a temporary trial loaner to capture some of these images yourselves. If you have not been regularly using a borescope, it is almost guaranteed you will find some concerning staining or debris. Instruments to check would be difficult to clean suctions, like Andrew's suctions, arthroscopic shavers, flexible scopes, and flexible reamers. Having pictures of potential instrument issues is valuable, but they are not nearly as powerful as images of your instruments, used on your patients for decision makers to look at. Make your best case to the financial decision maker in administration for the importance of this device with the support of IP, surgery, and quality. Let them know that although you ask for a lot of things in sterile processing, this one needs to be high on the list because of how directly it will impact surgical outcomes. Utilize real stories of patients that have acquired surgical site infections from contaminated devices and the facilities that have had to pay the cost. Not only was it far more costly for them to care for those patients, many of those stories ended up in the media and hurt the reputation of the hospital in the community. This tool isn't something that should be thought of as a cost. It is a way to save the hospital from the cost of bad outcomes and accreditation citations. To find out more, feel free to contact us at 321-610-8977 or email support at aitproducts.com.